Mark Bogard, Chair of the Building Societies Association, my latest guest on Money Talks. With us, as I say, a genuine industry insider, enormously experienced. What would you say to people watching and listening to On The Money today about the state of the housing market, where we are historically in your long experience? So the housing market has always gone up or down. It's gone up for a long time. People have got very used to very low interest rates, and those very low interest rates are like being on an opiate drug. It's like heroin, and coming off that is very difficult and very painful, and we're just starting to see that. So we've seen interest rates go up a bit. Uh, they're forecast to go up more on the 4th of August and be you know, the market thinks there's a 75% chance there'll be 3% by the end of the year. Every Which, time of course, means standard variable mortgage rates are more like 4 or 5%, right? Yes, and most people these days are on fixed rates, so more than 90% of people are on fixed rates. But a lot of people, particularly younger people, will get a two-year fixed rate. Mm. That time goes very quickly. Mm. And a few months ago, you could get 88 mortgages at less than 1%. That world's completely gone now. Wow. So when people come to replace those mortgages, you know, they might be at 3% or 4% or 5%. And people quite rightly have spent a lot of time talking about energy costs. But the difference in people's mortgage payments will be very significant. That will inevitably have an impact on the housing market. Because when people go and see a mortgage broker, they tend not to talk about how much they can borrow, but what their monthly payments That's right. can be. So someone will turn up, see a mortgage broker and say, look, I can afford X pounds a month. How much can I borrow? Yeah. Now, when I was a lad, uh, and, and you too, Mark, you know, the, the high street, many, many building societies, the Abbey National, the Halifax, TSB, I was just discussing. Then we had the so-called demutualisations, didn't we? There are far fewer building societies around today. The nationwide springs to mind. And, of course, there's lots of regional ones too. Do you regret the fact that there are fewer building societies around? Because there is a different ethos to a building society, isn't there? Or at least there should be, that they work for their members. They work more like mutuals. They're not charities, of course, but they're maybe not quite as hard-nosed as some of the banks who lend people money. So there are 43 building societies left. Uh, there are lots of credit unions, which are also mutual. We don't have any shareholders, mm. uh, and there's lots of evidence. If you deposit money with a building society, you will get more on average than with a bank. Um, the building societies, particularly the smaller ones, will do loans to people that the big lenders, particularly the big six, are not interested in. Mm. So we do lots of loans to older people into later life lending. Uh, we do lots of more complicated loans for younger people. And if you're the big six, you just can't be bothered to do that because yeah. you just want to put stuff through a machine. So diversity in financial services is as important as diversity in any other aspect of life. How can we... Bo I really be believe that we've lost something. That's why I was so interested to meet you with building societies. Of course, they're still important, but they're not nearly as big a presence as they were for today's generation of youngsters and indeed older people who are trying to raise money. What can we do to salvage and even bolster our mutual sector so what you said isn't quite true. Okay. So during the pandemic, actually, there was a period where the, the building societies were by far the biggest suppliers of mortgage lending. OK. Um, today, we sort of oscillate between about a, a sort of a quarter and a third. Yeah, of the maybe at the, mar market. at the margin, of course. Yeah. But the stock of outstanding loans, it's overwhelmingly yes. with non-mutuals these yes, days. Yes, that's absolutely yeah. true. Um, Look, if I can't compete with HSBC sure. or Barclays. So if you absolutely want the cheapest loan, then HSBC... If, the, if you're a bit more complicated, you've got a bit of a story to tell... Self-employed, um, you know, maybe. Self-employed, yeah. you've got two sources of income, you're a slightly complicated family, then the, the, you know, a mutual will listen to your story. Um, because we're... You know, so we underwrite... We have humans who look at each loan, not, not a computer. And that's really important, and people value that... Um, and so people think better of mutuals than they do of uh, shareholder-owned banks. It's just a fact. So we do everything that we can. But those demutualisations were driven by a set of factors, uh, you know, often the remuneration of the people running them. Mm, indeed, I remember, I remember it well. Now, of course, a lot of people who work in the mutual sector, like you, they really believe in, in home ownership and the spreading of wealth and so on. 
you're obviously not a house builder in, in any way. You fund people trying to buy houses that are increasingly expensive. Do you think we've lost something here in the UK, the fact that the share of 25 to 34-year-olds who own a home has gone down from well over 40% when I first bought a home in the late 90s to around 20% now? Absolutely. So the thing that this country most lacks, uh, and we're trying to do something about it, I was you know, talking to uh, politicians last week, is an integrated housing policy. Mm. So there is no integrated housing policy in the UK. Politicians do a whole series of short-term actions, many of which pull in a completely different direction. So, for example, a lot of money has been spent on help to buy, which was supposed to help young people buy a home. All that did was push up house it's prices. Madness and ended up with huge bonuses being paid to people in house builders. That money should simply have been spent on building new homes. Yeah, I so agree. So it's a supply-side problem. We need to build many, many more homes. And the other thing is we need to make better use of the housing stock. So people focus on new build, but less than 1% of the total housing stock is built each year. Using the other 99% in the best way possible, and stamp duty bungs the whole thing up. So old people tell us they don't downsize because of stamp duty. I completely agree with you. I mean, you may know I've, I've, I've written a book on housing, home, home truths. I've, I've talked to politicians about this, you know, on all sides of the political aisle often. I did get a sense that the Tories were going to grab hold of this. Michael Gove was making some really interesting noises about the state building more social homes, about maybe forcing developers to use their planning permissions. Many planning permissions that the big developers get, they just sit on them and don't use them for years and years and years to sort of contrive scarcity. Do you think, do you see anything among our political class and indeed our media class that reassures you we will ultimately get our arms around this problem? Because home ownership, it is at the sort of centre of the British psyche, isn't it? It's part of the British dream. But for many young people watching and listening to this show... It's a nightmare. So housing matters to you, to everyone in the country every night when they go to bed. However, um, there have been 20 housing ministers in the last 22 yeah. years. They come and talk to the Building Societies Association often. The first thing they say is, I'm in it for the long term. <laughs> you know that 12 months later it's not going to... So it's, you, you, they have to find a way to think about this long term. They need to get a group of people together to think about it long term. Because if you're the housing minister for the next 10 months what you think is completely irrelevant because you're gone and the next guy turns up. So that's why we have this higgledy-piggledy little series of, of interventions which don't form a proper whole, and that's why the housing market is a mess. Do you think the big developers are too powerful, Mark? The House of Lords Select Committee has called them an oligopoly. Yes. Michael Gove has called them a cartel. They would, of course, deny that because that would be illegal. So they've been massively helped by the help to buy yeah. scheme. That's not their fault. But what matters more than the 1% a year of houses that are built is the 99% of the stock that isn't. So too many old people don't move. They stay in a four or five bedroom house. That sh they should be moving out and giving that to a family. And they don't move because of stamp duty. That's what they tell us. Mark Bogard, really interesting. You are a genuine housing industry insider. You are chair of the Building Societies Association. It's really interesting to talk to you. And do come back here on The Money again soon. Thank you.